Welcome to Jumono Tutorials. In this session, we're going to be looking at light probes. First, we're going to look at what light probes are and how they benefit your space. Uh, and then we'll look at making the light probes themselves. Let's jump in. So first up, we have a space here that I have created in both the reflection probes and the light mapping tutorials. Uh, in this case, the only difference I've done is added some uh, wood floor uh, and some material on the bar. Uh, just to sort of add a bit of uh, color variation around the space. A couple of things I would like to bring attention to is uh, how the canvas is quite dark, even though the room is quite bright. Light probes will allow us to fix that situation. Light probes allow a builder to create a bunch of points in space that take in the baked information, be it emissive or spotlights and general lighting. So this allows the avatar or any dynamic objects which cannot be set to static and have that baked information look a bit more part of the space. Now they won't have uh, the shadows, but it will keep the detail of the general lighting in that environment quite well. Generally speaking, you will probably want to uh, create your light probes depending on where the light is. So over here we have a fair amount of changed light from sort of bright pink to sort of none and then to blue. So around this area and this area we would create a few light probes. Uh, we might also add a few more here because we sort of got a few more shadows and darker areas on one side and on the other side of the bar. But in here where the light doesn't change very often I might keep a lot less light probes. Each light probe has a small amount of information in regards to the lighting around it, and that's how the space takes that into consideration when animating or moving dynamic objects around it. So that's a quick introduction to light probes, but I think the best way to introduce them is by creating them. So in the reflection probes tutorial, I made a probes game object, and then I made the three reflection probes in there. So what I'm going to do is right mouse click on here and go to light and then go to light probe. Um, I'm going to keep the name because I'm going to see like use one light probe for the whole space. You can use more if you want to, but generally I will use one. I can, if I want to go to game object and go to light and then go to light probe but that will put it outside of the space object, which will create a QA issue. So generally when I'm creating objects, I will create them where I want them with right mouse click and these assets here. Now, as you can see, a light probe is made up of a bunch of dots. In this case, the four. So I'm going to grab this object, go to inspector, and then move it up to there. The minimum you would do is put them along the floor and possibly around all of the walls and the ceiling. Uh, but of course, depending on how complex your space is, you'll add a lot more. Now my usual approach, you don't have to do this, is editing one layer, sort of on the lower, and then duplicating that up the space. So let's look at that. So here we have our light probe. Make edit light probes selected, so I can select these now. You can add probe, select all, delete selected, and duplicate selected here. So if I just go add probe, it will put one in the middle. But usually what I will do is use hotkeys to do this instead. So I will grab all these and press delete. Go to the top view. I will grab all of these, move them sort of to the edge there. Uh, and I'm going to create a sort of uh, a three meter cube to start to there. And if you use control D and then move, you can duplicate the light probe assets like so. Now this will be all a bit different. So I'm just going to focus on the main areas here. Control D. Another three. Now, if I want to, I could use control C to copy. And that doesn't duplicate it, but then control V. And then I can use that as well, but duplicate with control D does do it faster. Okay. Now these ones here are actually in an asset. So that's actually not what we want. Usually we want them to be where light actually is. So I'm going to put that there. 
Actually, I'm going to put these ones on the floor here, just in front. So we have our baseline. And then with these ones, because there's no floor there, I'm going to put it there. After that, I'm going to grab all these, control D, and then move these to the halfway point and control D again up to the top. So we have that. And this is where we start getting into a bit of the detail. So I'm going to sort of move these a little bit closer. Control D on the other side. Now we don't need that that high. So I'm just going to get rid of those ones. Uh, I'm also going to move these ones over there. And these ones are okay. So notice that once we bake it and we do that with the lighting, um, it will take all of the lighting information and put that in the, in these dots as information. So I'm going to move these down to there. I've sped the video up about three times here, uh, basically to save a bit of time. But as you can see, generally I will move the probes around to where there is change of light. So on the left there, over near where the glass uh, shelving is, like that, that's quite pink. A little bit closer or further into the space, you'll get it sort of not pink, and then it'll be generally lit. So making sure that I line up my light probes to align with the lighting is basically the goal at this point. Now, if I wanted to, I could probably delete most of these, but generally I do like to sort of have a, a little bit. So what I might do is I'm going to get rid of these ones because the light doesn't change very much at all, but the light will change here. And then let's look at how we create this situation. Once again, just going to time lapse here. The main thing you're looking at is the difference in light around the blue and pink assets. So I'm going to make sure that there are enough light probes to notice the differences in those areas um, and then also move things around the stage so there's no overlap of objects. All right, so we have our light probes positioned. Once again, it's just using this and control D for the most part. And then uh, adding the probes in the areas that change light the most and less in areas that don't change. So let's do a bake of this space to see the result. And get rid of that. And then we go to lighting. Now, as noted in the light mapping tutorial, um, a lot of our assets have static applied. So all of these information, for example, especially these. Ah, make sure you turn that off so you can click on things again. These are set to static. In this case, we're a contribute, but I took them off the reflection probe static. These are not light probe elements. Um, so basically it will take all of the lighting information as needed. And then when you set to bake, it will create that in information. So let's see it one more time and press generate lighting on the lighting, which can be found at window, rendering and lighting. Uh, go to Steam and your light map probes. So the light maps are done. Now, as you can see, the canvas is a uh, lit better than it was before the bake. Um, so you can't see much difference, but if you go over here where it is pink, you can see how the lighting is changing to pink. Um, and if you go on this side, then it'll get more clear. As you can see, the light probe information actually can change the color of dynamic objects. If you see here, this is not static at all, but it is being colored by the environment. Now, as soon as you go outside, it gets a little bit weird, but it will connect. As you can see, there is a dot that is connected to the nearest ones possible. So we have that as well, but the most accurate is keeping it to the Light probes. Now let's, as another example, I'm going to duplicate this and let's create a simple material. So we've got one here. Now this has zero metallic and zero smoothness and it's just white. So I'm going to put this on our asset here. 
so we can sort of see the effect a little more clearly. So as you can see, our little white dots, and those are representative of the lighting around. So if you look really close, this one actually has some blue. So if I go closer to the blue, you can see that the change color um, due to the emissive light that has been baked into the light probes around it. So when your avatar is running around, this these are what the uh, avatar uses for its lighting. So I go that, and then it's clear, and then we get closer, and it goes pink, like so. So super useful for making sure that a dynamic asset that is not baked uh, with light mapping can fit the environment in a much more realistic, uh, in whatever fashion way, so that it does look like it's part of the environment rather than completely separate. Hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching and happy building. <laughs>